I'm going to ask you a question, saints. All of them. Back here and here. I know right now some of you say, here he goes again. I mean, you're going to get your defense mechanism up. But in light of what I'm talking to you about right here, and Jesus says, why don't you understand? Even because you're not hearing my voice. I want to get dead serious with this church. We're talking about walking in holiness in this church. We're talking about setting an example for the lost. We're talking about being free to worship the Lord with clean hands and a pure heart. And you hear us talk about this idolatry. This idolatry. And yet, I, I get the feeling that some of you are not hearing a word I say, or any other pastor that's mentioned it, that you're not hearing it all. But I'm going to ask you a question. I want to say it in very great love right now. Who told you? Who told you it's okay to sit for hours drinking in filth in front of television? Who told you it's not idolatry to sit and watch something that's totally corrupted out of the pits of hell? Who told you that's not corrupt? Who told you it's not an idol? Was it Jesus who told you that? Was it the Holy Ghost said, You're mature. Brother Dave's just on a hang-up right now. He'll get over it. No, folks, I hear holy thunder in my soul. I hear God says you don't sit in the seat of the scornful. I hear a scripture that says, I'll set no evil thing before my eyes. I hear the word that says, bring no abomination into your house. I hear it by the hundreds of scriptures, and I don't understand why our people in this church are not hearing it. You say you are a believer. You say you want to go all the way with Jesus. Who told you it's okay? Did the Holy Ghost tell you you can sit there and watch Dallas and Dynasty? Did the Holy Ghost say that you're mature? You can sit there and watch violence? You can bring those R-rated movies and videos into your house and come into this house and praise God? Who told you that? Did the Holy Ghost tell you that? Second Thessalonians, the second chapter. I'm going to read the first 12 verses. Follow me if you will, please. 2 Thessalonians 2, 1 to 12, falling away to the Antichrist. Now we beseech you, brethren, by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and by our gathering unto him, that you be not soon shaken in mind or be troubled, neither by spirit nor by word nor by letter as from us, as the day of Christ is at hand. Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come except there come a falling away first, and that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition who opposeth and exalted himself above all that is called God, or that is worshipped, so that he is God, sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. Remember you not that when I was with you, I told you these things, and now ye know that what withholdeth, that he might be revealed in his time. For the mystery of iniquity doth already work. Only he who now letteth will let, until he be taken out of the way. And then shall that wicked, or the Antichrist, be revealed, whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth, and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming, even him whose coming is after the working of Satan with all power and signs and lying wonders, with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish, because they receive not the love of the truth, that they might be saved. And for this cause God shall send them strong delusion that they should believe a lie, that they might be damned who believe not the truth, but had pleasure in unrighteousness. In this passage, John is telling us those whose hearts are still in love with the world, those who are still bound by lust, have opened themselves to the spirit of Antichrist. The lust of the flesh, the lust of the eye, the pride of life, it's not of the Father. Who's it of? It's of the Antichrist. And there are many that are still given over to that. I want you to go to verse 22. Who is a liar? <clears throat> but he that denieth that Jesus is the Christ. He is what? Antichrist that denieth the Father and the Son. Look at me, please. Anyone, John is saying, who has not come under the total lordship of Jesus Christ has opened himself to the spirit of Antichrist. If you sit here this morning and he is not Lord of everything in your life, you've given him a portion of your life, you're serving him 90%, but he is not totally Lord in your life. You have denied him. You've denied his lordship. It's not that you go around cursing his name, but you have denied him. You have not believed to him for full salvation. You have believed and trusted him for half salvation. You are not serving him with all your heart and mind and soul and body. You have opened yourself, according to John, to the inroads, the inmaking of the Antichrist spirit into your heart. 
This is so very, very clear. Whosoever denieth the Son, the same hath not the Father. But he that acknowledges the Son hath the Son, Father also. It's not just to say, well, I believe Jesus was God in flesh. It's saying, Jesus, you are God in flesh in me. With all power and all authority over lust, over sin and everything else. And I yield to your Lordship. And folks, if you sit here this morning... You have not laid down the pleasures of this world. And he's talking about the pleasures of unrighteousness. I, I would, before I close, I have to get this off my heart. Listen to me now. Because you, you will stand on the, before the judgment seat and I'm going to be there when you pass under the rod. I am totally convinced now, more than ever, that cable television... Filthy movies, both in the theater and the home VCRs, is the number one cause, is going to be the number one cause of hearts being prepared for the Antichrist. The number one. Because the eye is the gate to the heart. And he's going to march right through the eye and take control and sit on the throne of the heart because of filthy, corrupted, jaded eyes. You go ahead and you go to the show, go to a movie, pluck down your five or six dollars, and you sit there and listen to me good now you sit there and you sit there well there's blood and violence and you sit there while the name of Jesus Christ is cursed and mocked and run through the mud and trampled and the name of your holy God is cursed and I'm going to tell you what you've done you've just drunk from the cup of the devil you have fellowship with demons and you've provoked God to jealousy and you have supported the Antichrist spirit and the Antichrist spirit that Satan Satan sees where you're at. He knows where you're sitting in the seat of the ungodly. And you're going to sit there and you're going to take that. You rent a movie and put it in your VCR. Now, folks, I'm, I'm not standing here uh, saying in our office we have VCRs and we watch the tapes that come in. We are taping this right now on, on video. I, I'm not against that. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about when you go and you go past those dirty movies are even PG-13 now. Even PGs curse the name of Jesus. Do you not even have the grace to get up and walk out? Do you sit there? You wouldn't sit there and let them curse your wife. Or your husband. You wouldn't sit there and let them curse your... They named your children like that. You would get up and scream and say, Stop it and run out. And yet you'll sit there and let the name of your Christ... Be maimed, sit in front of television and watch filthy, filthy, rotten stuff and let that spirit of Antichrist seep into your soul. Provoking the Lord to jealousy. You know what it is? It's called a sacrifice to the devil. That's what God calls it, a sacrifice to demons. God help us. I ask you another question in love. As a pastor who weeps over this congregation, who's talking to you now, is it the devil going to tell you to tear it away and get away from idolatry? Is it the enemy? Is the devil saying, get away from iniquity? Is it the devil that breaks my heart over this kind of iniquity in the church? Is it? All right, then if it's God, you've got a dilemma. You have to make a choice. You cannot say Brother Wilkerson is legalistic. You cannot say, I'm sick and tired of hearing this. You have to make a choice. And I'll tell you why the choice has to be made, because it's getting worse. And if you can't handle it now, and this gets a hold of you, the lust and the filth that comes out of that tomb, if it gets a hold of your heart any more than it has now, no angel... Nobody is going to ever break it from you. Who told you that you can enjoy that fatal attraction? Even the devil calls it a fatal attraction. It'll kill you and destroy you. Who told you that's all right, that you can come to God's side? Who told you you can run out on your husband or wife? And you can walk right out the door and then come in the house and Who told you that? It wasn't God. It was the devil. Who told you it's all right to slip out occasionally and go nightclubbing? Who told you that? Did that come from God? You are of your father the devil and the lust of your father you're doing. Why do you not understand my speech? 
Why can't you hear my word? You know what shakes my soul to the very core? Jesus is speaking to those who call themselves believers, but he's saying, you're the devil. You're doing the lust of your father. And that shakes me up. Because you could sit in this church tonight being blind to who you are and what you're doing, making excuses, saying, that's not me. I love God. I'm not a fornicator. We be not fornicators, they said. We're not committing a dog. We're not fornicating. You say it's a, I, I don't say it's an, I don't say it like you see it. You don't have to see it like I see it. You have to see it the way the Word sees it. I, I begged the Holy Ghost. I begged the Lord in, in, in the ways you're speaking. Say, Lord, I don't want to... I don't even want to do that anymore. I don't even want to talk about that. I don't want to glory in anybody's flesh. But I know what it's like. I, I know that attracts of this thing. It's so satanic. Even though I preach like this, and occasionally I'm in a hotel somewhere. I, I, there's a tendency to turn on the news, and I did it a few weeks ago. I turned on to get the 10 o'clock news. And there was something. Come on, just watch the next movie. And boy, the Holy Spirit, I, I begin to feel this pool, this pool. I said, oh God, if, if, if it's not even in my home now, and that pool is there just occasionally like this. What kind of an attraction is that? What kind of attraction is it that you get angry at me for talking about it? I'm barking. I'm a barking watchman. And I wait for your soul. I, here's the here's the trick. Here's the here's this is this is really cute the way the devil. This is something else. And boy, does this hit the nail on the head. Rather than deal with their sin, they try to switch the blame by crying, "Don't judge." You want to see it in black and white? I got this in the Holy Ghost, brother, sister. Look at verse forty-eight. Then answered the Jews and said unto him, Say we not well, thou art a Samaritan, you have a devil in you. Look at verse 53. Verse, the, the last part, the last three words, four words of verse 50. Well, let's read verse 50. Art thou greater than our father Abraham, which is dead in the prophet? Whom makest thou thyself? Who are you? Why are you judging us? Now, now look at me. Listen, I'm going to speak, but I want you to hear good, because it strikes at what's happening in the whole charismatic movement today, at evangelical circles everywhere, and that shocks me. The anger that should be directed to their own sin is turned around and directed against the reprover. Did you catch it? Jesus is reproving them, and they say, no, wait a minute. And they turn the tables, and they said, no. You're the one with the devil. Devil speaking through you. You've got a devil in you. Because we're of God. And you don't recognize it. If you're of God, you'd recognize it. And you're wrong because you're judging. And judging is a sin. So that makes you the transgressor. So they take the, the searchlight away from their own sin. And they say, I don't want any preacher telling me what to do. I don't want anybody telling me what to do. I know I'm all right with God. I'm not going to let anybody tell me different. And what a clever device that's being used by the devil these last days to cover up false doctrine. He uses it to cover up sin in the pulpit and in the pew. The cry everywhere today is, don't judge. Because you're trying to hinder unity. It's... I call it a love trap, a false love trap. Now, before I close, I'm going to give you the good part. Hallelujah. Go back to 2 Thessalonians. They're going to be just a precious body, Paul says, who are going to rise up against the spirit of Antichrist, and they are going to stand strong. They will never be overcome. They're going to overcome the world, the flesh, the devil. They're going to overcome the wicked one, the Bible says. Hallelujah. Verse 13, 2 Thessalonians, 2nd chapter. But we are bound to give thanks always to God for you. Here's that special people. Brethren, beloved of the Lord, because God hath from the beginning chosen you to salvation through what? Sanctification of the Spirit and belief of the truth. Oh, look, look at for just a minute. I really believe that this church, the great majority that are sitting here this morning, you're here because you love the truth. 
You're not afraid to be reproved. And because of that, God sanctifies your spirit. He sanctifies your mind. He convicts you when you've done wrong so that you don't run out there saying, oh, everything is all right. But you examine your heart before the Holy Ghost. The Word, a sharp two-edged sword, pierces and it heals you. Hallelujah. Wherefore, He called you by our gospel to the obtaining of the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, brethren, stand firm or fast and hold the traditions which you've been taught by word of our epistle or our epistle. Now, Lord Jesus Christ Himself and God, even our Father, which have loved us, given us everlasting consolation and good hope through grace, comfort your hearts and establish you in every good word and work. Hallelujah. Folks, keep your heart open to the Word. Love the Word of God. God will establish you. When that Antichrist spirit comes in like a flood, the Word of God lifts up a standard against it, cannot make an inroad to you. The more wicked this world becomes, the more righteous you will become in the name of the Lord. I'm going to give you one last verse, Psalms 125. I want you to take this promise home with you. Psalms 125. Folks, you've got to memorize this. First three verses. They that trust in the Lord shall be as Mount Zion, which cannot be removed. Oh, let the devil raise. Let the Antichrist spirit come. You won't be moved because you're on the word of God. Hallelujah. Verse 2, as the mountains are round about Jerusalem, so the Lord is round about his people from henceforth even forever. Listen to this. For the rod of the wicked, that's the rod of the Antichrist, the rod of the wicked shall not rest upon the lot of the righteous, lest the righteous put forth their hands unto iniquity. Look at me. He's got a rod, that means authority. But his authority and his power and his reign will not come upon the righteous. Shall not rest upon you. But God said, I'll give you power and authority. You will not be overcome by Satan. You will overcome the world and overcome. This is the faith that overcomes the world. Even, even the testimony that overcomes the world, even our faith.